Welcome back guys to another Honda Navi video. What else would you expect? As you can tell by the title of this video, we will be diving into our floor panels today. Fun fact, this is the only piece that I have yet to take off. Um, and I'm talking about the upper floor panel piece. I absolutely nuked, if you can see right there, my floor panel. It got a little bit of the rear brake too, as you can see. About almost two years ago at this point, when I first got the Navi, um, I was taking this thing off-road like every single day, everywhere I could go, and somehow never managed to hit a single stick, stump, or rock. I was in this little trail area and just absolutely railed this massive boulder sticking out on the right side. I saw it last second. I had my girlfriend on the back. She went like a foot in the air off the seat and somehow managed to land on me. That piece of plastic took all of the brunt of that hit. So I've been meaning to replace that. But another reason I'm wanting to replace these floor panels is as you can tell, I don't know if you can see a little bit, but these fade over time. Now they're not the highest quality of, of plastic. As you can tell, this is a budget user friendly, eco friendly bike. If you go on the OEM parts diagrams, websites like motosport.com or partzilla, these floor panels are like $8 a piece. Like this storage box is like 28 bucks. These side panels are like $15. This entire bike is so cheap, it's crazy. Now I'm not actually complaining because the plastics aren't completely terrible. I even have my fender sitting right there. We do have the new Reckless Customs carbon stuff. That will be the next video, probably immediately after this. I shoot this video and edit it and post it. I'm gonna start shooting that video. So I'm just waiting on a couple brackets for that fender. But right now we're just gonna focus on the floorboards. One thing I do have to say though, in order to access these floorboards, very, very much a fair warning, you see it's just this this lower area storage box obviously is going to need to be relocated and taken out and then you're going to be taking that middle piece off bottom piece like does this and slides out this top piece actually doesn't come off unless you take off these side plastics i wish it wasn't designed that way but i, I mean i guess it does look a lot better with them going up into that piece but it's just going to be a pain in the butt because you're going to have to remove your top tank piece your seat both of these plastics on top of your storage box and then actually removing the, the footwell plastics as well. So it's gonna take a lot of fasteners, unscrewing them and putting them back on, but I think in the end it will be worth it. So yesterday I got this massive box in, it's probably three feet long by a foot and a half wide. I did rip my address off because people can be weird. Um, let's go ahead and look in this box. I ordered this from motosport.com, by the way. They stock most of my OEM parts that I get, as you can tell by the stickers. So we got our bottom belly pan, which is going to be sitting just like that. The middle piece that sits just like that. We got this fresh floorboard. This is where the storage box would be sitting. So we're going to go ahead and install all three of these right now. So let's get into it. You're going to have to take off one, two, three, four, your seat, your side plastics and your tank plastics. I wish it didn't come to this, but it is what it is. I will try to zip this out as fast as I can and you should do it as well. Obviously you just take a key, go to the hole down here, flip it up and the seat pulls right off. Once you take your seat off, you're gonna have to move your storage box. There's two 10 millimeters right there and a 12 millimeter up there that you need to take off and the whole thing should just pop out. Because I have the speaker unit in here and it's more of a hassle just to unplug everything and rerun the wiring through the harness, I just use a box to sit the, I just pivot this and it just sits right there. It's kind of out of the way and I don't have to deal with it. Once you remove your storage box, you will see that you have access to these two plastics now. But before you move to these, you're going to have to take these two Phillips Japanese Industrial Standard bolts off. There's one there, one there. Pop this cover up using your key and there's two that sit down right in there. Once you take that off, you have two push rivets right there. There are push one push rivet on either side. And then you have all of these fasteners underneath here, including the back side and on the other side as well. And then you have these two big ones, which I already took out. They look like this on this side. 
the biggest pain in the butts, which are these inside JIS Phillips, which are a huge pain in the butt to do, but. Um, you have these three Japanese Phillips bolts. You have one up top and two down here. You should just be able to press these top pieces and it will slide out kind of like that. So now you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. I think that those marks are from the storage box. These are from the sun. You can see the sun fading and stuff like that. This sits out, I ride it a lot. In order to take these ones off, it actually has nothing to do with your foot pegs. A lot of people say that. This and this. So these are all 10 millimeters. This is for your storage box. Um, and then you come to the front and there's two 10 millimeters, one on the other side as well. You come underneath here, there's a JIS Phillips. You come by your kickstand and I believe there's one on the other side as well. It's identified by this silver washer. That's another 10 millimeter. And then there's a JIS hiding underneath the passenger foot peg as well. So you'd think that it would just pop out, but it unfortunately doesn't. There's tabs. I wouldn't say all along this, but there's a tab back there I know it sits into. There's one right here, and I think they're similar on the other side. This sits over, if I can get it to focus. This piece of plastic actually sits over this piece of plastic, and they both go around this 10 millimeter hole. So you actually have to lift this up and do it on the other side as well. A storage box. And also, you will need this piece. This is pretty much gold right now in the Navi community. I don't know if you know this, but if you go to try to find these, these are extremely difficult to find, especially from the OEM websites that I find. They're always out of stock. They're never in stock. So it's actually pretty difficult. You can see the lining that it sits into. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to take this off. I know that the rear brake is a huge issue. You have to like push it down and then get the other side off and pop it. There's a specific way you have to do it. Once you lift this piece up, there's gonna be the ability for you to push this lower piece out. But that's not gonna wanna drop down until you do it on the other side. These work kind of in conjunction with each other. And then once you do that, it wants to loosen up. Gonna go to this back piece, that falls down. So with this, I think I'm gonna have to put the camera down for this one. I don't think I can do this with one hand. If I can, then that's impressive, but. Cause this thing's a pain in the butt to have to get this past the rear brake. Honda recommends you actually remove the rear brake. Ooh, look at that. Bingo, bango. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you can see, uh, she gets off-roaded quite a bit. This is my first OEM kind of bash guard skid plate floorboard thing. So before we put that on, I'm gonna go ahead and take this top one off. I believe this is held in with push rivets as well. So I think if you look back here, oh yeah, you can see it. So you see them? The, they're like grommets, kind of like this, how they hold your, so that pops off. And I think I might have to do that on the other side as well. Once that pops off, I'm pretty sure this is ready to pop off. I don't, I don't see any reason why it would be held in. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought. The big important part of this is keeping these clips you don't get clips when you order the panels and stuff like that. It will come with those grommets because they are in the mold. These ones love to get lost. They're actually held on there pretty loosely. You know, they pop right off. These are the ones that I was talking about that when you go ahead and take the lower floorboard off, they kind of like fly off at you. So once you feed all the clips back onto the floorboard, I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly what I did to take this off to put it back on. I'm gonna go to the other side slip it through and we will bolt this down. So 
So this isn't gonna wanna sit flush properly because it's got no bolts holding it in. So we're gonna go ahead and button these two up front. We're gonna put this one back in, put the storage box ones back in, and then we're gonna do the ones on the side and the back and everything should look pretty good. So I went ahead and got, cause I knew I was gonna be doing this. I got custom bolts. They're actually eight millimeters rather than 10 millimeters. Um, as you can see in the side of the front fender, we have color coordinated red, blue, red, and then I have a blue one up there. So we will be expanding our red, white, and blue a little bit further, which is gonna be kind of cool. So I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> Just like that, we got new floorboards. Look at that. That looks actually pretty good. It looks even better with the uh, little accent colors. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys found this video informative, helpful. If you guys were nervous to dive on in down there, that's the first time I've ever done it actually. That was my first time doing it and this might be you guys' first time doing it as well. Um, as far as the carbon fender goes, I also have the carbon light shroud as well probably going to be putting a halo in that i'm going to try i don't know if i want to go the custom route or if i want to order the one off reckless customs i've heard bad things about that one though and when i did the uh the side plates if you guys know the the side plate video they gave me some pretty crappy ones and they didn't want to refund me on it so it is what it is i think i might do the custom route just to make it cooler but um yeah, thank you guys for watching. Look forward to that fake carbon fiber video. Um, it's not just going to be about that. It's going to also be how I managed to shim that fender if you guys are looking to do the 12 inch rear rim mod as well. Um, so we're going to go into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.